Is it demand? Is it supply? Is it a combination of both? In our view, it's selling capital. The market's really focusing on the demand side of uh, the issue. Um, what OPEC communicated is that they will extend the cuts through Q3, but then they would like to bring back some oil in an orderly fashion in Q4 if demand merits it. Instead, the focus of the market has been on the fact that, oh, they're going to bring back oil, they're under pressure within the group, and therefore we might have an oversupply. And that's selling capital. That's really not how we view the communication. And when you look at these surprises on the supply said we haven't been surprised you know we had big winter outages in the US in January and oil production came back in the US in February and March um, so it, it's not really a surprise on that side but the concern has been whether OPEC would be okay with this rising market share and, and if members would throw in the towel and leave like Angola did last year the communication from this weekend from OPEC suggests the group is intact they are are discussing things openly and if and when production comes back it will be in an orderly fashion can we just talk about demand a little bit more then what are your baseline expectations for the next several quarters so we expect that demand will actually rise in the third quarter. We're not at a 2.2 million barrel per day increase expectation the way OPEC is, but neither are we as low as 1 million barrels per day. We probably see around for the year 1.6, 1.7 million barrels per day, year on year demand growth. And in Q3, we should see that pop um, locally coming. The problem is that refinery margins have become much, much weaker and coming out of maintenance season in China now, we're, we're not seeing an expectation of a run boost and we've actually seen run cuts. And this is where we need that first line of demand to, to come to the forefront and take up some of the overhang we've seen in the crude supply uh, market in the last several weeks.